Every year in America, there are millions and millions of girls that are suffering from loving video games, pizza, and chicken nuggies that are just dying to be picked. And if you're an illegible man with a pulse, you can pick up your phone today and DM one of these girls so we don't have to listen to them anymore. So what are you waiting for? Pick up Instagram, pick up your phones, and make a difference. You're in the arms of the picnic group. Hey, my name is Missy, and I'm a certified baddie with a fatty that make cringe comedy videos on TikTok and Instagram. Please don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss another dumb video I make. Now, let's get back to the video. Welcome back to my channel. Like, so glad you guys could make it here. Like, how are you doing? <laughs> okay, so I have a little secret. Um, <laughs> maybe you guys can kind of tell from the intro of this video, but um, I used to be a pick me girl. Like a really bad one. Pick me girls used to be, oh my god, I love pizza and chicken nuggies and I love video games and I want to look like Mila Kunis, you know? But I feel like there are so many more layers to the pick me girl today due to social media. So today, as someone who has been a prior pick me girl, okay, it's on the open, everyone, you could probably scroll on my personal Facebook and find tons of cringy sh I wanted to take a deep dive into the pick me girl. Cosmopolitan Magazine describes a pick-me girl as a girl that, quote, a girl that sets herself apart from other women by denouncing concepts socially associated with femininity and embracing activities, interests, and habits traditionally enjoyed by straight, cisgender, heterosexual men. They also say that essentially a pick-me girl's main goal is to gain the attention of men in her orbit by pointing out all the ways in which she stands out from other women and basic, quote unquote, feminine interests. Instead, they focus on stereotypically masculine activities and opinions, this is important, regardless of whether they truly prefer them. So maybe you are huge into video games, sports, whatever that may be, right? But that doesn't make you a pick me girl in itself. What makes you a pick me girl is shaming other women for having feminine interest. And really, it's just about shaming other women is what a pick me girl is, all right? It's not all about having male interest. It's all about shaming other women or pretending to be someone you're not to gain the male attention because you think that what you're doing is the male gaze. Make sense? Okay, so now that you guys have a little bit of a gist of what the pick me girl is, let's get into the categories of pick me girl. Category one being the most vanilla of the bunch, the most tame of the bunch, the classic quirky pick me girl. So this is the pick me girl that we are all probably really familiar with. This is the ones that we've been seeing memes about like, I'm not like other girls, I like pizza, I love beer. In my opinion, the whole classic pick me girl is really stemmed from the early 2000s, you know, late 90s trend of being the cool girl. Cool girl was originally a term used by Gillian Flynn in the book and movie Gone Girl. So in the monologue from Gone Girl, she describes what a cool girl is, but it's the male fantasy for the perfect woman, right? She's laid back and funny and smart and hot and really nice feet you know, the whole shebang. So in the monologue, she explains that the problem with the cool girl is that she doesn't exist. And she doesn't exist because the male fantasy is full of holes and contradictions. The cool girl is super, super hot, yet she never wears makeup because that's deceitful to men. The cool girl loves video games, but insofar as that she doesn't overpower or outshine the guy that she's dating. The cool girl only wants casual sex, but has to be emotionally available to her partner and give him all the same privileges that a boyfriend gets. Do you guys see my point now? The cool girl is not a real person. It is this made up standard that we place on women to make them feel like they're not enough. And really the only thing that it's good at is being a, a, a good cheesy CW plotline. They really had me out here on the playground thinking that if I pretended to like cars and video games, that the boys would see me like how they see Megan Fox. This is what I looked like back then. I mean, you can probably draw your conclusions on how that went. <laughs> so after seeing tons of movies of Megan Fox 
in a tank top, fixing cars, and Jennifer Lawrence talking about how she deep-throated a pizza for the millionth time, we started to believe that that's what we needed to say and do in order to get male attention. And we started posting stuff like this. Why do most girls claim, I'm not like other girls, and then proceed to act like every other girl? Want to be different? Lay out the Starbucks and go study. Make something of yourself instead of hating on other girls. Oh my god, you guys, not the pick me girl trying to tell other pick me girls to not be a pick me girl. This is like, the first hour and a half in Inception where Leonardo DiCaprio's character is like maybe in the first or second dream and like he's just trying to incept this idea that's artificial into the person's brain. <laughs> also, what do you guys have against Starbucks? You guys are acting like people that get a pinkity drinkity at Starbucks is like an indicator that they're a serial killer. Calm down, okay? We don't need to hate on everyone that likes Starbucks. Do males even want a girlfriend who gets good grades, is educated, plays sports, loyal, respectful, kind, and more of a family girl than a party girl? Or is it just all about the girls who have no interest in having a future and have a huge and Is that really what our society has become? Girl, you're acting like having a huge and titties and no plans for the future is a bad thing. Girl, if I had a big ass and some mommy milkers, bro, my problems would disappear tomorrow. Let me tell you. This should be the next Ariana Grande song. Scooter Broad, are you listening? Girls with big titties and girls with big booties. Girls with no plans for the future, but they're cuties. You like these titties? Gee, thanks. Just bought it. I see it. I like it. I want it, I suck on it. I want it, I suck on it. Wouldn't the world be better if all women could like have bigger ass and bigger titties and no plans for the future? Like, I'm a girl and I'd rather play sports than get my nails done, watch ESPN instead of MTV, eat steak over salad and more. Oh, and I'm straight, so we do exist and we do get friend zoned. <laughs> Every time I read one of these, I like feel like I went back in time and I just said like the world's best yo mama joke in the year 2010. Like I feel like I just pwned someone, all right? I feel like I'm hashtag winning Charlie Sheen. If you are a girl that gets your nails done and watches MTV and eats a salad, f you. Like we have real troops, all right? Real troops out there that plays sports and eats a steak and watches ESPN that are out there fighting for our mid men in your DMs. We need to send a reinforcement. We need to send We need to send and we need to send some there. I'm counting on you guys right now to send some to the friend zone to help our, our fellow women that are stuck in the friend zone. <laughs> I'm not like other girls my age. I respect my body and most call me old fashioned because I believe my guy should be well fed, little to no fast food, home cooked southern meals. Go ahead and hate me for this. Women are in the kitchen and men go out. You know the funniest part about all of this is that every single one of these start out with, I'm not like other girls. I'm not like other girls my age. And then they proceed to list the most basic ass that they could possibly list. I mean, they literally go out and say like, I'm not like other girls. I cook. Like, bitch, we know because all of us also cook. It's really funny to me because I'm sitting here like hoping, praying, manifesting to come across a post where it starts off by saying like, I'm not like other girls. And then they proceed to say things that other girls don't also do. I'm not like other girls. I pee standing up. I'm not like other girls. I wear two left shoes. I'm not like other girls. I lure children to their deaths in a manhole and I dress up as a clown. Like at least that's something that other girls don't do. <laughs> it's crazy to me because women are statistically more likely to do all the housework, the childcare, the cooking, the cleaning. They're going to college and graduating at higher rates than men are and 
Yet all these people are sitting here on the internet being like, I'm not like other girls, and then proceed to say the things that statistically women are known to be doing more than men. Bitch, if you're not doing at least Pennywise type shit, all right, I don't wanna hear you talking about how you're not like other girls, okay? If you're not luring little kids into manholes, bitch, you're like other girls. Okay, so that was the classic quirky pick me girl, all right? Next we have, I'm better than other girls, pick me girls, all right? I like to call this the boss babe, pick me girls. They're not trying to say that they're different than other girls, they're trying to prove that they're better than other girls. So this is the girl that is always acting weird when they're around other men. The type of girls that are proud homewreckers, that are attracted to men that are in relationships because they just want to break up a relationship. <laughs> that they kind of see men like little Pokemon that they can collect and it gives them clout the more Pokemon that they can collect. So let me just give you an example. He chose me, he don't want you. He chose me. Nanny, nanny, boo, boo. I yeah. Um, you know, I think I speak for most women that uh, <laughs> you can keep them. <laughs> okay, so let me just try to like explain this trend to you. It's women boasting that their man other women, but he comes home and he his girlfriend more than he the other girls. That makes sense. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you heard me right. That's exactly what this trend is. Like TikTok has its own mental illness on there. Every couple that does this trend just looks like they should be on a TLC show. I mean, I don't know what type of TLC show they should be on, but the, it, it seems like they're the kind of people that would be like the, the mega stars on a TLC show. <laughs> Another trend that kind of is in a similar vein to this is the whole like vanilla wife versus me trend. No, I'm with Asami. Yeah, but when you're with her, you're thinking about me, aren't you? Oh my God, this is literally like the second hour of Inception, all right? This is like third, fourth dream type of shit. Okay, so let me explain this trend to you guys. We are telling maybe an ex or a guy that you have a crush on, we are incepting into his brain that in the future, you might not marry me, but I am so hot and so spicy and so much better than your vanilla wife that you picked and loved that you would be thinking about me more than your wife. And scene. <laughs> this is literally the definition of punching the air. <laughs> How are you guys really gonna make a video, all right, shaming an invisible woman that doesn't even exist? What are you doing? The sad part of these trends is that so many of these girls are so beautiful and so young, and yet they, they're they sitting out here like they're in the desert with their tongues out, just waiting for the scraps of a five out of 10 man that probably will not treat them very well. You guys ever notice that the girls that are posting this type of are always your friends that are in their baddie era? You know what I'm saying? Every single one of these girls are sitting out here, like it's like a thirst trap for them, where they're like, oh my God, look at me, I'm so hot, I'm such a baddie, eh. But you can't say that you're a baddie when you're out here crying over a man where his shits take five to 10 business days to diffuse the smell. You know what I'm saying? Ladies, have you ever wondered why some men choose Wonder Bread women over you? And when I say Wonder Bread, I'm just talking about girls who are a bit more plain, a bit more basic, average. And you, on the other hand, are like a divine French croissant and you're confused. You're like, I don't get it. Why are you going for Wonder Bread when I'm right here? Okay, so I'm guessing that she's gonna say because he's, he has a different taste. Maybe he's attracted to the other girl that you might not think is as attractive as you are. Um, obviously personality, intelligence, so let's see what she says. Starting with reason number one, Wonder Bread is cheaper, okay? You get a lot more value for basically half the price of a croissant. Oh, maybe not. And even though some men might appreciate the way you look, they are gonna choose Wonder Bread because she doesn't require as much money or time to impress. Which brings me to reason number two, Wonder Bread will change herself for a man, a croissant will not, okay? Wonder Bread will become a grilled cheese, an avocado toast, a PB&J, any day of the week, depending on what he wants. A croissant, on the other hand, it's kinda like take it or leave it, as in you might not be as willing to compromise or change your lifestyle for a guy. And the oh, it just gets worse, just gets worse. Okay, I need to stop it, I need to stop it right now. There are 
men that are literally attracted to feet, squirrels, back of the knee stuff. I mean, like some alien I don't know poop. I mean, there are men that are literally attracted to anything and everything. And we're gonna sit here and act surprised that a man can be attracted to and actually love a woman that isn't conventionally attractive, a plain Jane. Say it with me, you guys, all right? I'll say it in my Dora voice. Just because a guy doesn't find you attractive doesn't mean he can't find your friend attractive. There you go, thank you, thank you, very good, very good. Everyone in the comment section of this video was just like, well, maybe he likes your personality. Maybe he's just attracted to this other girl that you might think is ugly. There are men that f squirrels, okay? F Let's move on to the final boss of Pick Me Girls. I'm talking Megazord, dark magician type sh So the tier one Pick Me Girl has gone way past the wanting to be quirky and stand up from other girls type of pick me girls, or even just saying that they're better than other girls, pick me girls. Now it's just hating women just for the sake of hating women, you know? Common examples of the tier one final boss pick me girl is Pearl from TikTok. And you know, we'll be reviewing her videos today. Um, we also have classically Abby. I mean, with a brother like Ben Shapiro, I mean, f wonders and Candace Owens. But I feel like with Classically Abby and Candace Owens, there is a lot more that motivates them to be a pick me girl. And a lot of it is for political reasons. But Pearl is saying and doing all this pick me sh And really it doesn't seem like there's any other motivation for why she's doing it other than to just be a pick me. Men are trash. That's common in society, right? Women are trash isn't. Men are held accountable all the time, every day. So are it's women. Always, women are held at a higher standard. No, we're at a low, we offer less yeah, to men than ever. We are the average age of first few men, men value purity and youth. Purity, youth, beauty. <laughs> yeah, officers, yeah, he's over there. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, he was the guy I was telling you about that said he values purity, youth, and beauty. Yeah, he's over there. You're welcome. You're welcome. Pearl is out here defending this whole thing of like, well, men want girls that are young and ripe and supple. Am I right, guys? Am I right? And she's like over 25. These guys that she's defending for her life right now would not even touch her because she's over 25. I just don't like fat girls. You know damn well that if someone's 300 pounds, they're not going to get it. So you can say, oh, you deserve love, but it's just not reality. You didn't need to call her a whale. Who would you oh, rather wow. smash, me or her? And I put a phone. <laughs> Literally me when I'm trying to do my morning affirmations, like I am healthy, I am wealthy, I am beautiful. Men would pick me over Lizzo. Like that's literally what I look like every single time I'm trying to convince myself of something that I just know is not true. <laughs> okay, let's go on to the next one. Are you a good wife if you get married and then you gain a hundred pounds? Is that good wife? I'm just asking, am I off base? A bad wife for gaining a hundred pounds well, you would have for a reason. Happen. So, like, okay, yeah. let me let me just say. So I lost my job and refused to work as a husband, but I did it for a reason. Am I a good husband? The fat shaming is strong with this one. She really is the ultimate Jedi of fat shaming. I feel like Pearl thinks of herself like this savior to men. Like she's like the last airbender. Like if she was in a movie, this is what it would, this is how it would start, okay? Girls over 25. Girls who make a lot of money. Girls who choose to be childless. And girls that are fat. These four nations come together. And then she would pop out of like the male podcast space. And then she would be like floating. And like there would be like a little arrow in her like head, like Aang head. And it would point to like how she's like not over 200 pounds. Cause that seems like that's like the only thing that she's confident in herself about. <laughs> Honestly, you guys, if Pearl got some dick, that might just be what she needs to snap out of this delusion that she has going on, that all the men that she's defending would pick her. You know what I'm saying? Are you obsessed with fat, confident women? Well, try getting laid. Side effects include being way less annoying and caring a lot less about other people's shit. And if you call in the next five minutes, we'll even throw in free 30 seconds of sex with a mediocre white guy all free of charge. <laughs> okay, so what's the conclusion to all of this? Like as someone who has been a pick me for quite a long time, I just wanna say that being a pick me is, is harmful to yourself because 
when I was a pick me girl, you know, I said and did a lot of things that were not me. And I was making friends based on someone that was not me. And the second that I started to accept the fact that I'm a basic bitch that likes Starbucks, that likes Ariana Grande, I'm very girly, whatever, whatever, I was able to actually manifest people that cared about me for the person that I am. So with that said, I hope you guys had a little bit of a laugh through this video and I will see you guys in my next video. Okay, bye.